key aspects of Yamaha that is the reliability factor. They're a fully integrated system. A motor, a battery, a remote, and a display. The motor is very similar in power to the other motors on the market. It has 85 Newton meters of torque. It has 250 watts in Europe, 25 kilometer hour limit in Europe. Now, the motor has a lot of sensors in it. It has uh, for the speed, cadence, all those different things. That allows it to operate very efficiently. The motor has been reduced in size compared to its previous version, the PWX2. It's 20% smaller and 10% lighter. 10% lighter means it's 2.75 kilos. Bike brands can fit that into their frame styles and their frame designs much more easily and it gives them more flexibility when it comes to designing an off-road mountain bike. It has a new display and remote system, five power assist modes. One of those modes also has auto, an automatic responding uh, e-bike motor. In easy going flow trails and all that kind of stuff, these auto modes work pretty well. So it uses a combination of LEDs and it also has a Bluetooth connection, which allows it an Ant Plus, which allows it to connect to any other uh, computer style that you want. The display is very discreet. It sits behind the handlebar next to the stem and it has some LED combinations which show the power level support mode and the amount of battery remaining. Well, they've created quite a narrow Q factor and it should be the narrowest Q factor on the market. Due to that reduced size, they've changed the layout a little bit inside and it has now reduced backlash and play, which means that it is quieter. The battery, the version that we tested, uh, which was on the Yamaha Moro 07, it came with a 500 watt hour Yamaha battery. It's quite compact in style, very similar to the other brands. I expect to see other battery sizes in the future. It certainly deserves to be one of the top systems available on the market. In my experience, they have a very efficient use of the battery consumption. So the amount of current they draw and how they use that current seems to be up there when it comes to efficiency levels. Now, I didn't measure this. I noticed that a 500 watt hour battery, although it didn't have the capacity of a 600 watt hour battery in real terms, it did feel like it wasn't a 500 watt hour battery. It had more range available than I would expect for a 500 watt hour battery, especially if you're a fit or a strong rider. How did I find the display? Well, I actually really liked it. I thought it was uh, a good form factor, very discreet, behind the bar, very similar to say Shimano or something like that. that and that keeps it out of the way of uh, trail, uh, let's call it detritus or anything that you might hit on trail. So the risk of damage is a lot lower. The power switch was on the left. It felt very uh, discreet. It was quite robust. I actually quite liked it. A reasonably good attempt at a power switch. I'm still waiting for one company to come up with the perfect power switch. Yamaha though, I have to commend them, have done an excellent job. We did a range of trails. It was mostly up and down trails for around 30 to 40 kilometers. I kept my motor mostly in top power mode or the second one down. My main aim is to understand the actual overall range of the bike and what's possible with a 500 watt hour battery in the high power mode, I was very surprised. I've noticed one of the key factors of this motor is that even when you're pedaling fast with a high cadence, the motor does actually support you pretty well. They have improved that compared to the previous motor. The noise levels between on this motor are very similar to Shimano or Bosch, but probably sit somewhere in between. So the whine is slightly different, but it's comparable to the market leaders as we speak. It is very acceptable. I did not use the auto power mode as much as I would have liked because I didn't have enough time on it. But I would say that the auto power mode is pretty good. It does respond well, especially when the trails are smooth and the climbs are undulating. As the trail does get steep, you can feel the motor ramp up in power and you can feel that extra support which is interesting but for the time i have had on it i would say it's more refined than the pwx2 it's less brutal downhills on the bike one really important factor that we've noticed between a lot of motors is they can make a rattling noises when you're on descents. The Yamaha does not. It, obviously there's no price attached to this motor, but I would expect to see this motor on medium to high-end bikes. As a solid product to enter the market with, with their branding and history, I would say Yamaha have done an excellent job. But for now, if you've got any questions or you want to know anything more about 
the experience with the PWX3. Please write comments uh, below and I'll do my best to answer them and we'll see you on the next video. Yeah.